In this video, we're gonna be playing Queen Kyla Bin Krog Boros Discard Stacks Commander, following my personal perspective as I narrate the entire match while you get to see my hand and hear my thought presses during the match. Now, this is basically a stacks deck. We wanna activate our commander, discard cards, put them into play if they have CMC 1, 2, or 3, and then draw a whole new hand. Winning with Kiki Jiki or just overrun in general. So we're first in turn order, that's Happy, versus Krark the Thumbless, Celia Sren, Rograk and Frasius. This is a Polymorph deck, and Anje Falkenroth last in turn order. And my opening hand is great. We have three lands, that's what we need to get our commander to play, but we also have a turn one Deafening Silence, and then we have Golden Mirror, Grand Abolisher, and rest in peace. So yeah, turn one Deafening Silence, that's what we're gonna start with, and then follow up with Ramp and Commander and progress forward for glorious value. Starting off, drawing a card for turn. However, we have a pregame effect, Gemstone Caverns, from the Rograk Frasius player, third in turn order. Pitching a Cyclonic Rift, that's great. Playing a Plains, tapping Plains, Deafening Silence, great silence effect. It resolves, and I pass turn. So we're drawing a card for turn for the Krark player. Bloodstained Mire, land drop. Losing a life, cracking it. And then he costs a Mystic Remora. He finds the Underground Sea with his Bloodstained Mire. Or actually, he gets Volcanic Island. And after that, he passes the turn here. Draws a card for turn. A Windswept Heath. Sacrifice the land, and then with a tropical island he finds with a winds of heath he cast a fellow stone. Basically a mana rock. And fish triggers because of the fellow stone drawing a card. And then he casts Rograk for zero mana. But then after Rograk he passes the turn to Andje, last player in turn order. He plays a Chromox. This triggers Rhystic Study to draw a card. And then he plays an Arid Mesa and, and casts a Ragavan with the Arid Mesa that he finds. And then Great Monkey. I will take my turn on tap and draw a card. I'm gonna play this Wooded Foothills, sacrifice it, finding a play toe, and I will actually just pass the turn there. So I drew an Archivist of Ogma, and I could have cast on Goldmere for more mana acceleration, but I think people might search libraries here, so I, I'm gonna go and keep the mana and cast Archivist of Ogma in instant speed here somewhere down the line for card draw. This guy pays for fish, plays a land, plays Mox Amber, and pass the turn to Rograk Frasius. Plays a Chromox. He imprints a model of the mixture and gives a card draw to the fish player. That fish is drawing a lot of cards this game. And it costs Frasius, because I guess we're in that uh, slower game because of me. Turn goes here, going to combat with Ragavan at this guy, dealing 2 damage and exiling a land, I think. Under, uh, underground Sea. So that goes to exile because he can't use that one. But he gains a treasure. Oh no, he plays a pet tap people. No one is searching the library. Annoying. And he costs Anje. And then after Anje results, he passes the turn. In the end step, I'm gonna Archivist of Okuma. So I can draw cards when you guys search this, which you didn't do. But then on my turn, I will untap and draw a card. I'm gonna play a Sacred Foundry and lose two life. Tap out for my queen. She resolves. Combat. I'm gonna attack with my Archivist of Okuma at uh, Dragon's Belly. He takes two damage, and I pass the turn. So on our next turn, we can do some great stuff. But we're going here. He pays for fish. He plays a Lotus Petal. And after Lotus Petal, he passes turn. So we're here in turn order. Play an Island. Foiled Island. And then he passes the turn, basically playing the typical Frasius interaction game. So we're going here, and Anji activates in the end step. Discarding a Luxury Suite, a land, and uh, draws a card. And then untaps and takes his turn. Drawing a card. This is currently turn three. Begins with combat. Dragavan is attacking the same player, Dragon's Belly, the Krark, and Celius. <laughs> Hits another land, a Gemstone Caverns, goes to exile. And then he activates Anje, discarding a Madness card, untaps Anje and draws a card. Discards a Blood Made Vampire, untaps Anje and draws a card. Madness. Crazy. He discards Alchemist Greetings, draws a card, doesn't want to use it. Discards Mudrock, draws a card. Discards another Madness card, draws a card. Basically filtering through his deck here, discarding other Madness cards, draws a card. Anje. I really like Anje. I, I kind of like her though more in the 99 than as a commander, but she's she's kind of cool. Oh, a Verdant Catacomb. That's a land he can search with so I can draw cards and he cracks it. I will uh, gain a life and draw a card because of that. 
we draw a plane. Well, that's fine. It's good to have a big hand size with this commander because that means we can filter through the deck faster. And he finds a blood crypt. That paper proxy thing is a blood crypt. He activates Anja and casts a hail mongrel. It is basically as the creature. And then Anja untaps and draws a card. And then he uses Anja to discard a revolu revolutionist and draws a card. And untaps Anja because of madness. And then he casts a demonic tutor. I draw a card because of demonic tutor. And so does the fish player. Drew a mana bolt. He finds a card and passes the turn to me. I'm gonna untap and draw a card. I'm gonna put then planes into play and activate boss paying four mana for it. So I have seven cards in my hand, but in response, uh, Fractius, uh, Fractius actually activates. He reveals a mana vault and takes that thing to his hand. Then I'm gonna drop this thing, this thing, Grand Abolisher, Rest in Peace, Seaman Spirit Guide, Mana Vault, and Fawn into play. Now, this is a card, Rest in Peace, that is great versus Anja, but I kind of want to gain value. So we're still tossing away the Rest in Peace to the graveyard, and Grand Abolisher is also amazing, but we're gonna toss that to the graveyard also, because we're choosing Fawn for Seaman's 2, because that's more responsible, choosing Mana Vault for 1, and Seaman Spirit Guide for 3. And these also goes to the grave. And then I'm gonna draw seven new cards. So we drew a whole bunch of cool cards. We have already played land. I don't wanna cast Crypt just to feed a card. And we have Fawn in place. So that should interact a tiny bit at least. And Deafening Silence should interact as well. Somewhat a bit. Combat. Archivist Dogma is attacking at the Dragon's Belly for two damage again. And then I pass the turn. So he sacrificed Mr. Cremora this time, sending it to the graveyard, not paying for it, because he had to sacrifice the Lotus Petal to pay for it. Ooh, Winds of Change! This is a great interaction versus someone that has just cycled, uh, or actually searched his deck with a Demonic Tutor. However, Anji activates in response and discards a World Gorgeous Dragon to the graveyard, which is really scary. And I might misplay because I didn't cast the rest in peace there. So my new hand contains awesome stuff. Elish Norn and Dockside and some other cool stuff. Yeah, this is great. If we can get our Elish Norn into play, that World Gorgeous Dragon will do nothing and will interact with this board state, as it should. But we just have to survive the turn cycle. Drawing Deflect and Swat here would have been better. And the chance of Anji just accidentally drawing into a reanimation spell is pretty good so that's absolutely scary but i still think the winds of change was amazing then he plays a land tap for turn and then he passes the turn to rogress frasius turn four he untaps and draws a card for turn so my deafening silence and fawn kind of hurt this guy a tiny bit not by a big amount he can still kind of win through it but it's a little bit annoying for him to get there. He plays a Pluto Delta and sacrifice it. I will draw a card because of that. I drew a Mox Diamond. Yeah, we could cast that. We're gonna toss this hand anyway. He finds a Volcanic Island. And then he casts a Mana Vault. And after the Mana Vault, he will pass the turn. So Anja untaps. Last player in turn order. So currently has eight cards in his hand. Anja that can draw a lot of cards. World Golder Dragon in the graveyard. All he needs is an animate dead spell and he can potentially try to win the game here. He attacks with the Ragavan at poor Dragon Spelly Krark Famless Silas Ren uh, player. He takes two damage and flips a... Ooh, Cabal Ritual. Not that good when you have a Deafening Silence in play. He activates Anje. He madness and costs Necrogoyf. Power and toughness equal to all the creature cards in all graveyards, and every high everyone has to discard her hand at uh, discard a card and upkeep. I guess Anji can go to beatdown game plan, I guess. That's a big creature currently. And I guess this means Anji won't win, but just producing big board states. However, Force of Will from Krark the Thumbless, counterspelling that thing. However, Anji untaps and draws a card. Anji plays the land Sun Scorch uh, Desert, that is the wing con with Wool Gorgeous Dragon, dealing one damage to Dragon Spelling, and then pass the turn. I'm gonna untap and draw a card. I'm gonna play this mountain. I'm gonna tap this, floating two colors and cast Dockside Extortionist. I gain six treasures. I will spend three mana and three of those uh, floating mana to cast Elish Norn, the new anti ETB Elish Norn. So this will prevent Wool Gorgeous Dragon from winning the game. I will activate Commander, spend three treasures putting her amazing ability on the stack. Activation resolves, discarding this thing, this thing, mirror entity, land, mox diamond, and face. Professional, professional face breaker. I'm gonna choose mirror entity and goblin crater maker, and the rest goes to this uh, graveyard, and I draw six. 
We draw some really good cards, but nothing we're gonna do here, I think. Combat, these two, two twos for a total of four damage at you, Dragon Spelly, Clark, and Celia's friend player. So I could have cast uh, a uh, Rule of Law creature, but I kind of want to keep my mana open. I have a spell I can cast from my hand, and I can sacrifice my Goblin Crater Maker here to interact as well, here in the on the board state. Casting a Brainstorm. Main phase Brainstorm. Draws free. I feel sorry for this guy, honestly. He puts two cards back from the Brainstorm, plays a Phyrexian Tower as a land drop. This is a land that can sacrifice creatures to generate black mana. And then he passes the turn to this guy, but in the end step before his turn, he activates Frasius. He puts that con on the bottom, and he reveals a command tower that comes to play tapped, but then he goes to his turn and untaps his entire board state. And he draws a card for turn. He shocks into play a steam vent, losing two life, and then plays the typical Frasius and pass the turn. I'm so happy this guy has discarded uh, or imprinted the. Uh, Cyclonic Rift with his Gemstone Caverns. Anja activates in the end step, discards a land and draws a card. And then uses both of his treasures. And then wild magic on my Elish Norn. However, it's gonna make me reveal the cards on top of my deck until I find a creature and put that into play. So Elish Norn is destroyed and we will start revealing cards until we hit a creature. Oh, look at that. I find uh, a Phyrexian Revoker. Well, so Phyrexian Revoker is gonna name Anja. That was amazing. And then he goes to his turn and draws a card. Yeah, it's not that effective to Polymorph on this deck. He begins by going to combat and attacks with Ragavan at the, the same Clark poor guy again. Flipping a Pongify. So this Pongify is absolutely perfect because now I can kill the Phyrexian Revoker, I guess. And he costs Animated. Sad part here is that my Phyrexian Revoker does not prevent him from winning the game here because there is a land here that will deal damage on the ETB and he can sit and flick a wolf or the dragon infinitely if this animate that resolves. Everyone pass priority and animate that resolves and wolf or the dragon enters. So wolf or the dragon ETB trying to exile everything. In response he sacrifices his treasures. However, Francius cast of dress down and this is in response to the wool border etb trigger which means that yeah everything will basically disappear and because of deafening silence there's no possible interaction available to anyone i am so happy about this because this is also a counter towards my board state now this is disappearing as well super happy dress down resolves francis draws a card so this means that anya's entire board state is gone permanently gone for good and this is also why this combo is so unpopular and why i would like to say don't play it like it's a good combo it can get there you can win games with it absolutely but there's this chance that if it fizzles there's no comeback it's it's a very all in combo <laughs> after all of this he plays a polluted delta and cracks it however because there's a dress down in play my archivist ogma doesn't trigger and i don't draw a card and then we cost Anja. At the end of st this turn, Dressdown is sacrificed and all my creatures are back to normal. So I'm gonna untap, take a damage from the mana vault and draw a card. I'm gonna play this planes, land drop. So let's do some math here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven possible attackers. We can all make them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can make them into nine, nine. I don't think we need to care about Anja at all. The Dragon Belly Clark Celius is shut down by my stacks effects anyways. So we could potentially kill Rog Celius here. But do we need to push nine into this? We push five times. So if we attack with six creatures and we pump them all by six, we will kill the Frasius player. However, he has two blockers, so he will survive. I think I need to grind value anyway and put some more rule of law effects in play. So we're gonna activate the commander first and then go to combat. One, two, three, four. Activate the boss. Discarding command tower, Adalon, this creature, and two uh, madness cards and a land. So I will draw six new cards, but I will put this Adalon Rhetoric and Falia into play. And I will not cast these spells. They will go to this card and I will draw six. Then I will go to combat with the remaining all creatures at the Rogfrasius player. Six creatures coming your way. There is a mirror entity among them. So this is a really interesting creature. Mirror entity. I can currently pay five mana into it if I want to. He activates Frasius before blockers. He puts the top card on the bottom and reveal a divergent transformation. Yikes. Now we really need to hit him and kill him. He assigns no blocks. 
So if we don't pump anything, we would do a total of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 damage. But to increase it, we just need to pay 3 mana, which is a lot, so I don't want to do that. So I'm not pumping anything. You take 10 total. I'm gonna tap 3 mana, spend a treasure to cast Glow Rider. Non-creature spells cost 1 more to play. So currently I need to pay 3 mana for a non-creature spell extra. And then I pass the turn. So we're building a very big board state. And over on win, it's not that um, far away. There is a Divergent Transformation though, but he needs to go through two Rule of Laws and three creatures that are increasing his uh, casting cost by one. So that's problematic. I don't think Divergent will do it. And once again, I am so super happy he did exile his Cyclonic Rift. And that dress down is also gone. He plays a Mox Opal. So that's a free mana Mox Opal. Expensive stuff. And then after Mox Opal, the rule of law, he has to pass turn. So we go here. So we could Divergent now. No, we can't. Divergent costs a lot of mana. He will untap everything. He draws a card for a turn. So currently it looks like we are potentially winning the game. Our stacks pieces are doing an amazing job and our board state is just punching hard. He plays a Verdant Catacombs. That's a land that will give me a card draw. Tapping a bunch of mana. So what he could do here is cause Divergent on his two creatures to get Tide Spout Tyrant and Willbreaker Horror into play, which means he gets two bounces, which is gonna be some good interaction versus me potentially, but I think I still swing at him with a big board state and kill him with my overrun effect here though. Anyways, and here we go. Divergent on the stack. Paying seven mana for it because of uh, taxes. He targets Frasius. The, the crazy part, like, target anything in my board state doesn't really matter. Like, target Glow Rider, target Rule of Law effect. He targets Mirror Entity. That's clever. That's really clever. I have no effects. Mirror Entity will be exiled. He puts Frasius to the command zone. And there we go. Hullbreaker Horror. For me, it's a... Ooh, Mog Catcher. Huh, that's pretty good. So Mog Catcher is a pretty amazing card. You can search out goblins with it. However, we did lose our Mirror Entity there. That's sad. But turn goes to Anje. Plays a Wooded Foothills. And pass to me. But at the end step, Verdant Catacomb is being sacrificed. I will gain a life and draw a card because of Archivist Dogma. We draw Mentor of the Meek, that's great, uh, but we're not really gonna be using it that much. He caused a dramatic reversal to gain a Holebreaker trigger, bouncing my Mog Catcher to my hand. I have no tricks to this. I will let the, the so Mog Catcher goes to my hand because of Holebreaker Horror, annoying, and he will untap all of his uh, artifacts. I'm gonna take a turn, untap, lose a life to Mana Vault. Oh, play Flooded Strand, sacrifice that, finding a planes. It is actually a little bit annoying that the mirror entity disappeared. This means that we can't win yet, but on the other hand, no one else is gonna win for a while. I'm gonna activate my commander by tapping four mana. Queen, Kayla, Bing, Krog at the stack. I'm gonna discard one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. More catcher will go to the grave. I will put this Mother Ruins into play together with Mentor of the Meek and this uh, creature that can tap for mana. I also discard this Madness card that I'm not gonna cost. And the Lightning Tutor that also goes to the grave and Red Wayfarer. Now I actually have two Mentor of the Meek triggers, so I'm gonna pay two mana for it and draw two extra cards. And then I draw six more, going up to eight cards in my hand. That's amazing! We drew Swords of Plowshares, that's exactly what we need. Uh, can't cast it now though, because we tapped out for it. However, we did draw Wing Ring Wingmare, which is also great. And an Esper Sentinel. So I think what we're gonna do is just hold on to the Swords on the Hullbreaker Horror for next turn, and then just put Wingmare into play and continuously control the board state. I'm gonna sacrifice my two treasures and cast this Vring Wingmare. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast, so currently cost four mana to cast a non-creature spell. Now, because there is a big 7-7 seven, seven blocker, I'm not gonna swing anything at that guy. And instead, we're so we're gonna punch the poor guy uh, that we already don't need to kill yet, but I'm attacking with everything that can can attack at Rogras Silias. No, Croc Silias. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage coming at you. And then I've done everything I can do. Attacked, played land, cause a spell, pass turn. At the end of my turn, he cracks his uh, Arid Missile and gain a life and draw a card. Because of this, I have to discard a card. I will discard a City of Traitors. I'm now down to seven again. So it might have been wrong to tap out there because I could have cracked my, used my Cobbling Crater Maker to destroy one of his artifacts that he wants to bounce basically and that could be great. But I, there is so many anti rule, like rule of law effects in play and so many extra tax effects in play. And he's once again, unless there's a board wipe, 
board wipe kills me but also board wipe would win him the game wouldn't really matter because if board wipe then goblin creator maker wouldn't do anything anyways so unless board wipe i think we win this match and this uh rograx frasius ties by tyrant only has two cards in his hand Ristic study however he realized that the Ristic study costs seven mana and he can't cost it and he concedes uh bored him to death is a way to win uh, it's also three o'clock in the morning for this guy so it's very late for him so he, he's kind of out he can't cast a single spell he has six life remaining so he's more or less dead and uh Anya is also kind of this is basically a one-to-one -one between me and this uh polymorph deck so turn goes to him if he finds an interact way to win here, wins, otherwise I sort his guy, or well, there's interaction potentially too, but Tapping Island and Chromox, Steam Vents and Taiga, <laughs> and cost Frasius. Yeah, this will give him a trigger on the Hoodbreaker horror, horror. Targeting my queen and no interaction, queen goes to my hand. Good choice. Honestly, the wrong choice. The correct choice here is Mother Runes. And then after Frasius results, he passes the turn to Anja. Draw a card and pass the turn to me. I will untap and draw a card, take a damage from the mana, Volt. I'm gonna play this land here that I can sacrifice and draw cards with. And I think uh, my Mother of Runes is gonna be MVP in this uh, match. Uh, attack with everything I have at you. Uh, not that bird, that doesn't do anything. But here we go, big swing. Uh, not the Falia though, you can kill that with your guy. Or actually, sure, the Falia too, everything, here we go. The reason why Mother is amazing is because he can make protection from blue against uh, the big tide sprout. He blocks the folly with Hullbreaker Horror and Frasius at Glow Rider. I will tap my Mother of Runes to give, uh, and Mother of Runes will give Glow Rider protection from blue to make it stay alive, and Falia will be the only thing that dies, and the rest goes through. So you're taking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage. He's at 11 life and I kill him next turn, basically. I have no other effects. I'm gonna discard this Esprit Sentinel. Uh, no, nah. This, the Windsor Thief to my graveyard. Now we're at my end step. And I haven't cast a spell for this turn. Very important. But he is going to do that. An Autumn's Veil, which will give him an Holbreaker trigger to target my Adrenon, Adrenon, uh, Adrenon Fertoric. I have a response. I was waiting for this. Uh, how much do I need to pay for this now, actually? First time I'm paying attacks. So a total of four mana, Sword of Plowshare on your big Hullbreaker Horror. The reason I waited and didn't do anything is because he can't interact with this. And Hullbreaker Horror will go away with this, which is key in winning this game. The bounce happens. My Eidolon goes back to my hand. Still in my end step, I'm now gonna sacrifice the uh, Goblin Crater Maker to destroy Frasius for you, because the dollar that took two damage. And then I have no further effects in this turn. But in response to the Goblin Crater Maker, he activates Frasius. You gotta be kidding me. You're revealing a Tide Spout Tyrant with a Frasius activation. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> wow, this is a secondary Hoodbreaker horror. Blah. But I did tap uh, his Mana Vault here, which is kinda key. He still has to pay like three extra mana for each non-creature spell. And he can only cast not one non-creature spell each turn. And we're probably gonna recast Eidolon here soon anyways. But wow. And here we go. Tides bow Tyrant. Now he can't cast a non any more spells this turn because he has a rule of law effect in play. And also he's only have a command tower. And because of taxes he can't cast a single spell. So he will end there. Turn goes here. It's absolutely amazing to see that this guy haven't given up. A uh, shout out for this Anja player uh, sticking in the game. His chance of winning is pretty low though. Anja just passes the turn. I'm gonna untap and draw a card. Take a damage from Mana Vault. Put a Bloodstain Mire into place a land drop. And attack with everything except the uh, Mother of Runes at you. He blocks the Glow Rider with Tide Spout and Frex and Revoker with Rograk. I'm gonna respond by tapping Mother of Runes and give, give Glow Rider protection from blue. So Glow Rider stays alive and you take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage total. Not calculating in Friction Roker. Rograk goes uh, to the command zone. So I can currently cast any number of creature spells this turn without any extra cost. Sarah Paragon. One, two, three, four mana. So this is an angel that with flying that once during each of your turns you may play a land from your graveyard or cast a permanent spell with mana value three or less from your graveyard if you do. Yeah. So I'm gonna recast Goblin Crater Maker with this trick. And then I pass the turn here. No, sorry, wait. I can also actually cast this uh, uh, humongous Sarah Ascendant actually. Because why not? This is currently a 6-6 flying with lifelink, so he's uh, ultra dead if he doesn't win here. It's actually getting hard to track my entire board state currently. It's a big board state. 
But Sarah Paragon feels like an amazing card for this deck, as we are discarding a lot of uh, cards to the graveyard. Like we can play lands from the graveyard, we can recast our hate beers from the graveyard, and we can cast things from the graveyard that we that we've discarded. Huge value engine. He cast Rograk for two mana. This will give him a trigger from his big genie. Uh, Vryn Wingmare is going back to my hand. Ooh, he cast a Resculpt. Well, that's gonna give me a 4 4. That's pretty good, actually. More beaters. He far targets the Fawn of Amnest Fist, and Hullbreaker Horror targets Deafening Silence. This happens, I get a 4 4. Uh, this will be my 4 4, and the uh, Deafening Silence goes to my hand. So they're slowly cleaning up my board state. Maybe I should have put the rule of law in play anyways. Hmm. But Glow Rider is still there. And it costs a Noxus Revival. He's just trying to get as many bounce effects as possible here, I think. Now they're doing some politics. Anya's still here. And they're trying to figure out if there's anything from Anya's graveyard that could actually save them, so to say. Because Anya has uh, madness cards with interaction. So bouncing Phyrex and Revoker here would make Anya able to interact again and loot the deck, so to say, here. He targets the Alchemist uh, Madness cards to put that on the top of his library. A Madness spell that can deal 4 damage or something. Alchemist uh, Greeting. However, he changed his mind. He realized he can't really utilize Anya to survive anyway because he would just die to my swing. So he puts this land on top of my library and he's gonna try to win here. And Glow Rider is bounced to my hand because of Tides about Tyrant. So now there are no more rule of law effects in play. There are no more tax effects in play. He was able to get rid of them slowly but steadily, all of them. But we do have a crater maker. Oh no, Andual Breach is the one thing that makes him win and not us. And he gains a Town Sprite Tire and Trigger. This is so bad. I've, ah, we lost. We lost. So close. Wow, I feel so upset now. We were so close. So close. He targets the Mana Vault with a Tide Spout. So Mana Vault will go to your hand. And Breach resolves. We should have casted the other rule of law creature, 100%. So stupid, so stupid. Misplay, big misplay. So from here he can cast uh, Noxus Revival a bunch of times. So he casts Noxus Revival from his grave by paying f to life, targeting Chromox. I'm gonna sacrifice my Goblin Crater Maker and destroy the Chromox in response to the bounce effect on it. The only chance I have winning here is that you don't have a card in your hand that taps for that has a color on it. Andwell Breach was literally the one thing that would make it possible for him to win here. So he casts Chromox from the grave, exiling three cards from his uh, graveyard with the fangs of the power of Ulderwold Breach. Tight bow triggers targeting Rograk. So Rograk goes back to his hand. Then Chromox resolves, imprinting uh, Rograk, smart, and he taps one and casts Mana Vault targeting Fellower Stone. So Fellower Stone is bounced. Now here is the trick. With Tout's Bow Tyrant, he can cast a rock, bound a ritual rock, bounce another rock, recast a rock, and flicker these two rocks infinitely, making infinite mana. And with his infinite mana, he can cast Frasius. And with Frasius and infinite mana, he can draw his entire deck. So the combo he is uh, finishing us off with is with Crop Rotation, Noxus Survival, and Turn the Earth. He can make an infinite loop where he casts Crop Rotation. As a additional cost, Sacrifice Barbarian Ring, put it into Graveyard. In response to Crop Rotation still on the stack, cast Turn the Earth to shuffle it back into his deck. Find it with his crop rotation, sacrifice a deal to damage to someone, and then use Noxus Survival to turn Turn the Earth back to the top of his library, use that to draw it with Frasius, and then use Turn the Earth to shuffle back crop rotation, Noxus Survival, and Barbarian Ring into the deck. And then use Frasius to put Barbarian Ring into play again, because Frasius puts lands into play on his activation. And then he has a uh, strange infinite damage uh, loop. So GG's, Rog Silias wins the match. I heavily misplayed. I should have recasted the rule of law effect again. To have two rule of law effects in play would have made it impossible for him to win there. Or well, not impossible, but really hard.